everything that's happening in the war that you see right now in the Middle East, nothing is going good. As a result of this war, you're seeing many protesters. You're seeing much division. You're seeing a lot of people going out into the streets, rioting, doing bodily harm. No good is coming from this war. And that's all that's being portrayed in the news. That's all that Christians are talking about. That's all that Muslims are talking about. That's all that Jews are talking about. All they're talking about is the destruction, the chaos, and the deaths that are happening as a result of what's happening in the Middle East. But in the midst of the storm, in the midst of this war, there is one thing that's happening that I have yet to see a news media outlet cover. I've yet to see one social media influencer talk about because everybody knows that doom and gloom sells. But I'm here to bring the good news to you in the midst of the chaos that's happening in throughout the Middle East. One of the biggest criticisms is that there's a lot of innocent people dying, thousands and tens of thousands of casualties. This is what's being slipped under the radar. Watch this and check this little news article out. Jesus is still moving in the Middle East. Hundreds of people in the Strip are reportedly seeing Jesus in their dreams. Why is this so significant? And this is the article that shows this, and 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 further talks about it. You can look at, you can look it up for yourself. I'll put the link right down in the description so you can read it for yourself. But why is this so significant? Because in Islam, it's taught that that Allah can speak to people in their dream, and this is the way that Jesus is revealing Himself to the people in Gaza causing hundreds of people to convert, and it's rapidly spreading. There is a spiritual awakening that's happening there. And we know that the Bible says that where wickedness abounds, His grace abounds even more so. So in the midst of the chaos, in the midst of the death, in the midst of the destruction, people are still hearing the message of the gospel. This just shows us about the mercy of God. This shows us about the love of Christ and where His heart is at. Because Scripture tells us that He's willing that none should perish, but all come into acknowledgement and repentance of him. And the only reason why he hasn't come back yet is because he's giving men and women time to settle their accounts before God. One of the key indicators is given from the life of Noah, that in that day, it shall be like the days of Noah. It took Noah over 100 years to build that ark. Every single day, he was with a hammer saying, hey, a flood's coming, a flood's coming. Get in the ark of salvation. Get in the ark. You're going to be saved. God's going to destroy the earth because of the sin of mankind. Yet day after day, people were calling him crazy. But day after day, people were given an opportunity to get saved and not get destroyed by God's judgment. And that day is upon us. God's judgment is coming and it's coming very, very soon. And just like how Noah was building and building that ark for decades to come, what kept him going? His father's name was meticulously and prophetically named Methuselah, meaning when he dies, the end shall come. So as long as he saw his father, it was a prophetic sign that God's judgment would not come yet. And Jesus gave us a clear and cut sign also taken from scripture. This is taken from Matthew chapter 24, where he says that the fig tree shall bud again. Where Jesus said in Matthew chapter 24, that the last of this generation, the generation that sees the fig tree bud again, shall not perish before the Son of Man comes. And everybody at that time knew exactly what he was talking about. He was talking about the last person to see Israel birth as a nation. And that prophecy was fulfilled in May 14, 1948. When in one day, the Bible says, a nation will be reborn. That's exactly what happened. That fig tree bud, Israel became a nation in 1948, which started a prophetic countdown. And the youngest person is to witness this is 76 years old. And it's only by the sovereignty of God that that last person is alive. Methuselah was the oldest person who ever lived at 969 years of age. This person, whoever they are, 76, you can tell how soon his return is going to be. And it's going to happen quickly. In the twinkling of an eye. And a twinkling of an eye is not enough time for you to put down that bottle. A twinkling of an eye is not enough time for you to put down the drugs. A twinkling of an eye is not time. It's not enough time for you to kick that girl or kick that guy out of bed. A twinkling of an eye is not enough time for you to settle your accounts before a holy God. And I want to give you that opportunity to settle your account before a holy God. If the rapture were to happen today, would you be ready? And the thing with Bible prophecy, it's not meant to scare us. It's to prepare us for the soon return of Christ. And I want you to prepare your hearts. And if you're scared, you can go to bed easy at night knowing that you have peace with God. And you can know without a shadow of a doubt 
that when that time comes, you will meet him in the air. Or if today was to be your last day here on this earth, you will know that you will spend eternity with him. How can you be sure of that? Is there 100% guarantee? Yes. The Bible says that these things have been written that ye may know that you have life eternal. You can know without a shadow of a doubt that you will have eternal life. So pray this simple prayer along with me. Say this, Heavenly Father, I come before you today. I give you my life. Forgive me of my sins. Wash me, cleanse me, and make me new. I believe in my heart that you died. And on the third day you rose again. I confess with my mouth that you are my Lord and my Savior. I renounce to the world. I renounce to the devil. Heaven is my home. And from today, I am your child in Jesus' mighty name. And if you pray that simple prayer, I want you to reach out to me because I have some free things to give to you. I got a couple of devotionals and some PDF files that you can go over. The PDFs contain books that show you your identity. What does it mean now that you're saved? Who you are in Christ, what you have been redeemed from, and what it means to be a new creation. And the two devotionals have a Bible verse that you can read every single day and a prayer that you can pray along to help build on your relationship with God and get you a habit of daily ingestion of the word. Jesus is king. God is moving. I'll see you in the next video. And make sure you hit that subscribe button and send this to a friend.